Welcome to this onboard video of Lucas Ellingham who is at Wilton Mill Kart Club for the 2022 Ultimate Karting Championship. This is the Rodux Senior Max class, and is contested over 10 minutes plus one additional lap. Unfortunately we do not have the official starting grid positions. The carts leave the dummy grid with many on slick tires but the rain spots on the camera lens shows there is a damp track to be dealt with. Lucas is not in his usual number 99 cart. Ellingham is at the back of the grid as a result of it did not start in an earlier heat. They use the customary short swerving tactic to warm the tires, but number 73 tried too hard and he has spun. The rain is just light at the moment, but dark clouds on the horizon could mean a heavy downpour, hopefully it will hold off until the finish because slick tires and a wet surface do not go well together. Lucas Ellingham rarely drives a Rodex powered machine, however he was entered as a guest to the Teesside Winter Championship when it was hosted at Wilton Mill this year, and won both heats and the final comfortably, which was a surprise to many spectators. Prior to hitting the start straight Lucas reaches down to adjust the fuel mix for the start of the race. The marshals try to shepherd the drivers into the start formation, but as it comes through pit bend and down the straight it loses shape and a false start is indicated by the flashing lights on the gantry. So around we go again and this of course just means more time to get heat into the tires. The heat expands the air pressure in the tire plus it also softens the surface rubber which gives more grip to hold the cart on cornering. Air pressure is an important item in the cart setup and often you will see pressures being checked just before the signal to leave the dummy grid. The rain spots on the camera shows how distorted the vision is, so a quick couple of hand wipes across the helmet visor from Lucas helps to clear that. The tension begins to increase again as the expectancy of the start draws near, starts are generally controlled by the pole and P2 drivers who must approach at speed that will give them a good start but must ensure the formation is intact and the following carts are together and within the tram lines. Approaching the boot for the second time number 121 starts to fall back a few places. Another quick visor wipe before the start. Again the marshals indicate what they require to get this race underway. The 2x2 two two grid is formed, and this time we are good to go. It is the usual hell's kitchen activity at the start of any race into oblivion and the crook that begins to thin and sort itself out through manual bank and the med swarm into Christmas corner. A card has run wide onto the grass, but we didn't get a number. Number 91 has got himself past number 30 and 34, then switched to the inside to pass number 99 and number 54 going into increments. It is still a bit hectic through Ashley and Wilkins into Oziers but Ellingham manages to overtake a few including number 33, 17 and 39. This puts him in the draft of number 15, 36 and 53 going up the back straight and into the boot. Number 36 and number 53 fall to his pace before the end of the lap. That was a more or less standard first lap for Lucas, keeping clear of trouble and passing the slower and less experienced drivers in he pack. Sweeping through oblivion and the crook he collects another victim as number 43 watches the blue and white MS card slip by. His eyes are still set on number 15 who is now on Manuel's bank. Relentlessly Ellingham pursues him through Christmas corner. Then Boxing Day, as it is known locally because it comes after Christmas. Closing the gap through both Inkermans and Ashley, to catch and pass him going into Oziers, but gets caught and repassed on the switch back movement.
Lucas Ellingham finally gets it done going into the boot when 15 goes wide and he closes up behind number 66 this leaves number 15 out to dry through the double right hand bend. Number 66 holds Ellingham off around pit bend, through start and finish and the run down to manual bank but he cannot match the pace of number 91 down to Christmas corner. There are a few carts up ahead squabbling for positions which is exactly what he wants because when overtaking speed is lost and the following carts close up. There is now a small gap to a 6 or 7 cart train racing in front of the 99 but he has the pace and will use all his skills to close it as quickly as possible. Gradually the gap gets less and less. But it is taking valuable time off the clock. Lucas needs to close this as quickly as possible. The first target on his list is the 47 who he catches on the start finish straight and passes going into oblivion, not a point favored by many for a passing move. However this puts the 91 right on the tail of number 23, who he sweeps around the outside of into Christmas corner and firmly shuts the door on the exit. Next up is number 40 who loses out through Ashley. There is quite a gap up to the next group of drivers and Ellingham is in his element when determination is required, he will never give up on a chase even when it seems impossible. Every bend and turn sees hundredths of a second taken out of the gap on a circuit where he holds the track record in the IME Senior X30 class. Being the 2020 IOMA Junior X30 Wilton Mill Champion and the 2021 IOMA Senior X30 Champion on this track number 91 Lucas Ellingham certainly knows his way around this circuit and his racecraft is exploiting every inch of that knowledge as he carves his way into that gap. It takes a lap to get onto the back of the next trio led by the 69 followed by number 27 with 38 bringing up the rear. Number 38 and 27 fall coming out of Osiers, with 27 trying to get his nose back in at the beginning of the back straight but the gap just wasn't there. Sixty nine chases down number five with number ninety one Lucas Ellingham hot on his tail, and bot make passing moves without losing much pace. Sweeping through on the inside out of Oziers onto the back straight, Ellingham makes his move and passes number sixty nine. Away in the distance is cart number eighty one, and ninety one must pull out all the stops to have any chance of catching him. The rain appears to have stopped, but there is no guarantee it will remain this way as the clouds are still heavy and threatening. Once again the seek and destroy mode goes into action and number 81 is caught and followed closely into Osiers, where without hesitation the overtake is made coming out onto the back straight. Ellingham uses the universal signal to think and work as a pair to catch those in front, but I doubt any driver will actually take note of such a signal this late in the race.
Number 91 drops his head to reduce wind resistance, as being a 6 foot plus driver his height is certainly a disadvantage when compared to shorter drivers who are naturally below the wind threshold. Lucas is now getting up to the sharp end of the field and closing in on the number 20, an old rival from his Wilton Mill Iami Jr. days. But no friendship is shown here, as Ellingham feigns to the right then quickly switches and makes a good clean pass on the left into Oziers. A back marker number 9 moves over to give 91, the open track and receives a salute of thanks from Lucas who is always prepared to acknowledge good driving and sportsmanship. As usual the car parks are stacked to overloading with mobile homes, small and massive team marquees, team transport, and competitors' vehicles. With two carts ahead number 91 starts the final lap not having enough time to catch either before the checkered flag falls does not enter Ellingham's mind, it is still a race and races are there to be won. Who knows what might happen on the last lap or even the next bend for that matter. This I think is the hardest part of a race for a competitive driver, no carts behind with the pace to catch them and nothing visible in front to fix their mind on overtaking. It is now they have to dig deep into their concentration and visualize where the best line is for this type of weather and conditions, do they need to ease off the throttle to save tire wear for the following race, time to drag up all the advice from their mentor and coaches. Closing rapidly on the second place cart Lucas takes third place as the checkered flag falls, a very creditable drive from so far down the starting grid, he will not be satisfied of course, but then no true racing driver is happy with anything but the top step of the podium. Fortunately the rain has stopped and there is even a streak of clear blue sky on the horizon, maybe this will spread into a nice rest of the day. Now is the cooling down lap where thoughts turn to what has happened in the race, what could have been a better strategy, what was misjudged. Of course the race is not over yet, there's still things to be considered, like nose cone and track limitation penalties, plus cart and engine specification checks. No position is concrete until the judges deem it so. The pit lane fencing is lined with team supporters, mechanics, friends, and family. Following the cart in front into the park firm it is discovered that it is in fact number 43 a back marker, so Lucas Ellingham is directed onto the waybridge and into the P2 spot, not the P1 but better than P3. And some more valuable points are gained for this prodigious UK championship.